everyone. I've been getting a lot of requests lately asking me how I make my fly cultures. So today I'm going to go into a little detail about how to make fly cultures from beginning to end. So first let's talk about the materials that we got here. These are 32 ounce deli cups. They're pretty generic. You can buy them from any kind of restaurant wholesaler or also from herb retailers. Um, Josh's Frogs, Dart Frog Connection, New England Herbs, any, any place online that sells stuff for herbs, they're going to sell these cups. Um, we also, I personally use Superfly. This is the fly culture medium that I prefer. Uh, but there's all kinds and you can even make your own. So that's the kind of thing that I recommend for people to try and to figure out which medium they like the best because it all depends on your environment, how humid you, your area is, um, and etc, etc. Um, also, we are going to use flies. This is what we're going to seed them with. I have both Melanogaster and Heidi Eye. Uh, they're dusted in calcium powder, which is this. I use this Rapashi's Calcium Plus. Um, this kind of helps keeps mite under control because if there are mites on your flies, then the dust helps knock, knock them off. So anytime you use flies to, for your cultures, um, you want to dust them. It's just good all around. Okay, so I'm going to start with clean deli cups. And I'm going to put a quarter, it's like, this is an eighth of a cup of medium. So an eighth of a cup medium in each in each one. Next, I'm going to put boiling water. I use this nifty thing. You fill it up, you press the button, and it boils. But you can also boil it on the stove. And I'm going to put half a cup of boiling water into each. Now you can mix them, you cannot mix them. I found that it's not really a big deal either way. But you definitely want to use boiling water because that's what activates the ingredients. Now once you put the boiling water in, you're going to put excelsior, which is essentially wood. But So I buy it in bulk and uh, because I make a lot. I make 24 cultures a week so I need a lot of supplies so you pretty much make a ball and you stick it in and it doesn't even matter that it's not solidified yet so I kind of just make a ball with it kind of as if it was pizza dough and you just stick it right in All right, so you'll see that I leave just a tiny bit of space up here. I find that when I remove flies from the cultures into my cups for dusting, it helps a lot if the media, if the um, excelsior isn't all the way up to the top. So now this is hot. So what I like to do is do them, I usually do this step the day before or hours prior to me actually seeding the cultures with fresh flies. So this is pretty much the culture pre-flies. You can pre-make them and put them in the fridge and it'll last you a week or two. Or I like to make them the week before, uh, the week, the day before, sorry. I like to make them the day before. That way when I go to seed them, they're at room temperature, which is what I did with all of these. I just wanted to show you guys how to make them. So now this here has been here since um, this morning, actually. Uh, but normally I do them the day before, but they're already at temp. So now is when I go ahead and put flies in them. So in one, I'm going to put... So I pretty much put, they recommend 30 to 50 flies. So I just want to show you, that's what that looks like. So they'll, once they're dusted, they'll stay in there, and then I'll cover it with a vented lid. 
These vented lids, I buy them from Josh's Frogs. I found that they have the best price for vented lids because I buy, I don't know, a thousand at a time or something. But um, they have both the plastic and the fabric vented lids. I have found that the fabric vented lids are my personal favorite, but that's also another thing that you can try you know, and then come to your own conclusions. Now here I'm going to put some high DI and that's about how much I put. So that is one culture's worth. And then again, I put the vented lid on top. So now you can kind of see how they're, they're in there. And so this is officially the beginning of a fly culture. When I say that you have to make fly cultures every week for your frogs, that's literally all it entails. Now, I have done the math, and I found that between one and seven or eight frogs, you can feed with one culture a week. So if you make one culture a week, you can feed between one and seven adult frogs. Um, I also brought these here. These cultures are each at a different state of development. So it takes uh, fruit flies exactly two weeks for the, from them to get from this to where you seed them until they're booming, which I'm going to show you what that is in a second. So this is a culture that I made exactly a week ago. These are the parent flies that I put in just like I did today. So in a week, that's what this culture will look like. And if you look here, you can see all the little maggots forming. They, the flies will lay eggs in the medium and they'll all come up and that's what they eat. So this medium is what feeds the flies, the flies, the larvae, all the things. So you can see how they're starting to develop. We see a lot of movement. This is what we want to see. This is a week later. Just in a week, this is not ready to use yet. This one is exactly two weeks old. You see how it's booming? That's exactly what we mean when we say a booming culture. You can see there is still larva, uh, which is good. But we have all these. This is all going to be fed out today. Um, so when you make a culture, it takes two weeks for it to get to this. That's why it's imperative to make every week a fresh batch because you're pretty much essentially making them in advance. Now this is a three week old culture. Um, it's already been through the one week, the two week phase. Now all of the larva that you see here in the second week culture, in this third week they've all hatched. So you pretty much have two weeks to use the cultures. Um, so you can see there's still some, some live stuff going on down there. This is a four week old culture. You can see it's darker. You can see that there's no more activity down here. All the larvas practically hatched and this is the last of it. So once I feed out what's up here, this culture is dead. Now this is exactly four weeks from me making it. So you see how it's very important to keep on a schedule because a culture will die. And if you leave it past four weeks, then you will have mite growth. Now mites are little, little, tiny, tiny bugs that live in the medium that will hatch at about 28 days that can kill your flies if they contaminate another culture, right? So, so this is the life cycle of flies. And so if you make every single week, you make a fresh batch, depending on how many frogs you have. So if you have between one and seven frogs, you just make one a week, just one. If you have, let's say, between 10 and 15 frogs, then you make two a week. But every week, you're gonna have the fresh batch that you're making, you're gonna have a one week old batch, a two week old batch, a three week old batch, and then the four week old batch you toss. So today I'm gonna to feed these out and then this whole batch is gonna go in the garbage and we start over with the life cycle. Um, so all of the materials I purchase in bulk. Um, this Rapashi you can purchase straight from Rapashi or if you want to look into making it yourself, you are more than welcome to do that. Uh, there's a lot of people that have, there's a bajillion recipes, so you can go online and, and seek out recipes from other keepers that have found success. Um, but I like this because it produces nicely, it doesn't smell, and um, you're pretty much good to go.
and these vented lids. Now the vented lids are very important for the culture obviously because that's how the flies breathe. So when you store the fly cultures, it's very important to one, store them in the dark. So that can mean a closet, a, um, any, like a cupboard, like whatever, anything that's dark, you'll have better production than if there's direct sunlight hitting them. Um, second, you definitely don't want to stack them. This cuts off all of the oxygen that gets to them. And what I found is that it actually increases the humidity and it makes the substrate runny, which is terrible. Um, third, you want to store each batch separately because at the 28 day mark, the mites start producing. Uh, you don't want to mix your fresh cultures with your old cultures just because you want to avoid completely that, um, that, um, that mixing. And um, what I also do is I store all of my cultures on mite paper. Now, they, these are rolls that are sold at, you can actually zoom in right over there. You can see the rolls of mite paper. That's where I store them. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird, but so they look like um, wrapping paper rolls and I buy them from Amazon and they're literally called bug paper or mite paper and they smell a little bit like um, bug spray, but what they do is they have a chemical that's, that kills bugs. So I put a fresh layer in a tub. You can actually see that in another fly video that I posted uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and I will store my flies on that, which is what keeps the mite production from exploding, and it keeps them from going from one culture to the next. Um, in my journey of reaching all of this um, information, I have had all kinds of trouble with mites. I've had mites take over my entire fridge when I held my cultures on top of the fridge. It was, it was just awful. So it's... It's just a nice preventative measure to always use mite paper. There's also alternatives to mite paper. I know Josh's Frog sells a bug blade, which is like a powder. I know that works pretty well. Um, so there's, there's definitely different, I know there's like a spray that you can line paper towels on the base and then keep it moist with this mite spray. But because I make 24 cultures a week, that means that I usually have four weeks worth of 24 cultures each. I mean, it's just way too much for me to constantly keep moist with paper towels and mite spray. So the mite paper seems to be my favorite. Um, now what I, there's some people that... Let's say you have a booming culture, right? And you have all these flies. Now, if you don't feed them all out immediately, you may find a crash, which means that everything will die and then you won't have any flies. So what I recommend to do is to maybe have an extra culture just like this, empty, with a lid, of course, in your fridge. So when you get to a point where you have too many, you can get your excess and put it in this and then feed out of your extra the next feeding or whatever. Um, you just kind of learn as you go. But you definitely want to keep on your one culture a week or, you know, whatever. Just because if you, if you look at this and you're like, oh, this is so many flies, this will last me for weeks. But that is incorrect because in two weeks it will be dead. So if you didn't make a culture two weeks prior, then by the time you think this will last, everything will be dead and you'll be without flies. And if you make a new culture, that baby's going to take two weeks to produce to this. And two weeks is a long time to not have flies. So, so that is why I recommend um, the one culture a week for, you know, a handful of frogs. Also, if you find that... You know, in order to, if you just have like, let's say two or three frogs and you don't want to make such a huge thing, you can actually try using, instead of a 32 ounce, you can try uh, using a 16 ounce cup and essentially do the same thing with the media, the excelsior, and just do everything the same, but with half the size. And you can see if maybe that has less of a production that will suit your, the amount of flies that you need without having a lot of excess. Also... Um, I know they sell like thinner cups. Uh, you can you can pretty much tr 
play around with the size. This size produces a lot, which is kind of what I'm looking for. I really need um, that high production. Uh, you also have to take into consideration the flies that you use, not just for feeding, but also for seeding. I actually find that I make two cultures, one or two cultures a week, just to seed my next batch. So these two pretty much never go to the frogs. They always go to just, just to making sure that I have enough flies for the next batch. Um, oh, because, you know, it's a lot of uh, flies, so... So yeah, so I think we pretty much covered all the bases. If there's any questions that you guys have, um, let me know. Shoot me a message or a comment um, if there's anything I missed. You can also go on Instagram and contact me that way. I'm the Dart Frog Queen for those of you that don't know. Um, not that you wouldn't know because that's my name here too. Um, <laughs> so yeah, all right. I hope I covered everything and um, happy frogging.